Hi, it's Rob from the Brush and Lobster. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint a Space Wolf Praetor for Warhammer 30,000. Now this video is going to be pretty long, so what I've done is I've taken out the sections on the cloak and also on the gold trim for the cloak, and I'll link up the videos for those, just to cut the time down a little bit, because it can be quite long, because there's a lot of details on it. If you'd like to support me, my coffee and Patreon page is a link below. Now onto the video. So this is the finished miniature. This is what we're going to be aiming for doing this tutorial. So you can see there you've got the nice power blade, you've got the nice cloak and the gold trim to the cloak. So those parts, the cloak and the gold trim, will be popping up on little links at the top there to take you to the other videos for how to do exactly that. But for the rest of it, it's just going to be painting the rest of the fellow. So we're going to start off with Citadel Corn Red. We're going to use this on the grip of his sword and also on the red of his cloak. Next color we're going to use is Citadel Retributor Armor, and for this we're going to be doing all of the little gold sections on the miniature, and there is quite a lot. The miniature itself was sprayed with Mechanica Standard Grey prior to starting the video, as they are a grey color rather than the kind of baby blue or pale blue color that they are in 40k. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Bugman's Glow just to do the skin on the Praetor. I'd say quite impressed with the miniatures from this box set, the Age of Darkness. The Praetors especially have got loads and loads of cool details, a lot more details than some of the other Forge World and earlier Heresy miniatures got, so quite pleased with those. And for plastics they really, really are great. So now I'm going to use Citadel Bane Blade Brown. I'm going to use this to do any of the leather strapping or pouches and belts and things like that that you may have on him. Also going to use it on the fur on his shoulders too. Now we're going to do the Praetor's hair, we're going to use Citadel Ratskin Flesh. We're going to just give the hair a good coat of this and move on to the next colour. I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel on the fist on red. I'm going to use this to do the gemstones, two on the sword, one on the laurel at the back there. I'm also going to put a little bit in his mouth. I'm going to put some down the barrel of the Volkite as well, and on each of the gems around the edge. And also on the top where it's got like the kind of plasma coil things on top, just to make it look a little bit different from the usual plasma weapons. Now we're going to use Citadel Araman Blue, we're just going to paint the blade of the sword with this, give it a nice coat of Araman Blue. Make that look nice and frosty a little bit later. Now we're going to use some iron hand steel. This is going to be to do some parts of the pistol, a few of the little tubes that are dotted around him, any of the little links that he's got on chains. If you see a few little bits that have added from spatial kit to him, so there may be some silvery bits on that too. Now 
Now we're going to be doing some Citadel Rakar Flesh. We're going to use this to do the little scrolls that are on his hip. We're also going to use these to do the little rune and the tooth which are hanging from his sword too. As I say, that's from a spaceful kit, so probably won't have that on your miniature if it's just the standard one from the box. Next up, some Vallejo black, or whichever black that you use is fine. I'm going to use this to do the little rubbery sections between the battle plate, like the seals, and also the body of the that Volkite charger. Couldn't remember the name of it for the life of me then. Finally, we're going to use some Citadel Avalanche Sunset to do some of the cables. And once we've done this, we can move on to the fun part, which is applying all the shades and the contrasts. The first contrast or shade we're going to use is Citadel Snakebite Leather. I'm going to use this to do his leather belt, which is strapped around his side there, holding on the scrolls and the little blade. And also, you've got that little sort of like chain thing on his waist too. Length of cord with the skulls on. Now I'm going to use some Brightland Flesh Shade to do the skin of his face. I'm going to use some Citadel Drucci Violet. I'm going to use this to do all of the bits we used the Mephist on red on. So the little gems in his mouth and bits on the Volkite Charger too. Next up we have Citadel Wildwood Contrast. I'm going to use this to do the fur over his shoulders. So you want to give this a nice good layer of this, you'll get the darker parts in the recesses. And this will be a nice layer to build up the colour from. Because it's already kind of semi-highlighted. So you can build up different shades of brown, go into beige on that fur. We're now going to use some Citadel Carrowberg Crimson. We're going to use this to do all of the red on the grip of the sword. You've got the cloak, the tabard at the front there. I was going to use this and any other little bits that you might have done using corn red. Now we're going to be using a little bit of Citadel Seraphim Sepia. We're going to be using this to paint the scrolls at the back and any little pieces of bone work you may have added if you're doing a Space Wolf one. Next up, I'm going to use some Citadel Nuln Oil. This is going to be to do all of the Mechanicus Standard Grey Armour and all of the Silvery Metallics. So give them a nice coat of that and then we can move on to the next shade. Now we're going for some Citadel Agrax Earthshade, and this is going to be to use on all of the gold. So any bits that you've used Retributor Armour on, you can just throw a load of this over the top.
Now it's time for Citadel Fugan Orange. I'm going to use this to do his hair, give it that deep orange in the recesses. Also you can use this on any of the yellow tubes that you've done if you want to. I don't in this video, but sometimes I do. Put it towards the end and the underside of those yellow tubes. Next up, we're going to be using a little bit of Citadel Drakenhof Nightshade. We are going to use this on the blade of his sword. Okay, I'm going to keep this in here. This is the cloak section. We're going to be working with Citadel Corn Red. What I'm doing here is I'm adding the basic colours back onto the cloak, leaving the Cowbird Crimson in the recesses. So you have that darker to lighter shades getting from the recesses out to the crests on those raised sections of the cloak. Now there is a full video of that, I'll link this here. To highlight the cloak we're now going to use some Citadel Wasdaka Red. We're going to use this on about 50% of the area we used the corn red on, but we are using this on the crests of the cloak where it's raised up and we'll be catching more light. Next we have Citadel Pink Horror. I'm going to do this once again to highlight the cloak. As I say, I'll be linking up the cloak here so that you can follow the full start to finish and see how that comes out. Finally, we're going to use some Citadel Emperor's Children just to do some final highlights on the cloak. Also using these colours on the grip of the sword, or swords I should say, he's got one on his hip too. So you can use that to do the leather strapping on that, I'll link up a video on that too. Now the start of the gold trim, like the non-metallic gold trim that I use on his cape, is here. We're going to start with Citadel XV88. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to link up the video because it's that many parts that it strings out the video for like an extra 10 minutes or something like that. So there is a separate short video showing just how to do the gold trim on the cape, so I'll link that up here. We're now going to start recolouring his armour. We're going to start with Citadel Mechanicus Standard Grey. So what you want to do is think about where the light's coming down from above and start highlighting it in that way so that any areas that are like under arms and the legs aren't getting that colour put back on so they're still shaded. And once you've done all this we can go on to the next colours and start making those highlights and layers stand out. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Dawnstone. I'm going to paint about 50% of the Mechanicus Standard Grey with this. So you're going to be doing like the top of the armour. So here you can see it going onto the top of the leg. Also the chest piece you want to be doing, leaving some of the Mechanicus Standard Grey on show and doing the top parts of that as well with this colour. And basically highlighting all the areas that you put the Mechanicus Standard Grey on. final grey we're going to use is Citadel Administratum Grey. This is mainly going to be to do kind of edge highlights and things like that, but we are going to use it on some of the larger areas where you've got large areas of 
Dawnstone showing, just to do a bit of a wider highlight on there. Now we're going to start working on the gold, so we're going to use Citadel Retributor Armour. We're just going to reapply some gold back to the areas we shaded earlier. And again, thinking about the light, think about where the light is going to catch it. And you want to put the Retributor Armour back on those areas while leaving the undersides and bits that wouldn't be catching too much light slightly dulled down with the Agrax Earth Shade. Now we're going to highlight that using Citadel Liberator Gold. So again, thinking about where the light is catching it, and where the light will be giving it that more shine, you want to be reapplying the Liberator Gold there. If you've got any areas which would be quite large and flat that you want to put a little bit extra Liberator Gold on there, that's fine, that works too. And if you've got like a long straight bit like the edges of the pauldrons or anything like that, you can do Liberator Gold on one part, miss it a little bit, a bit more Liberator Gold, just so you get that dark to light over the extent of those straighter bits. Now we're going to mix some Vallejo Model Air Chrome with the Liberator Gold, and we're just going to add some edge highlights and some extreme highlights with this. Now we're going to start wearing on the face, using Citadel Bugman's Glow to begin with. We're using a really small brush for this because I want to try and get the face looking good. So what we're doing is we are reapplying this but leaving the shade in the recesses. So you want to carefully pick out all the details and get the base colour back on. And just leave the recesses filled with the shade so you have those darkest area around the details. I'm going to use some Citadel Kislev Flesh, mix that with the Bugman's Glow, and then start to highlight. So think about when you're highlighting the skin, all the little details, you want to have the highlights on the top side of all those areas. So like the cheeks, the nose, the head, you want to try and get the wrinkles on the brow, and those creases down the side of the mouth and things like that, all highlighted, but making sure that you leave some of the Bugman's Glow and the shade in the recesses too. We're going to add a little bit more Kislev Flesh to the previous mix. And we're going to do another layer of highlights to the skin. This time you are just picking out really fine details and all the bits that will be catching a lot more light. Just to give them that little thin extreme highlight. Now we're going to use some Vallejo White, and this is going to be for his eyes. So using a really small brush, you want to be dragging the brush from the nose outwards, so you get that nice straight line for the eyes. We're also going to be picking out the details for his teeth as well, so very carefully pick out those. Next up, some Vallejo Black. We're just going to use that to do the dots in his eyes. So very carefully, you want to get a tiny spot of black in each eye. Now 
Now we're going to use some Vallejo Red Wash, which is a really, really good colour. We're just going to do some little bits of this around his eyes and on his lips too. Only a very small amount, it will give them a little bit of colour around those eyes and on the lips too. So they look a little bit more natural. It's a lot thinner than Caro Bird Crimson, so Caro Bird Crimson would make him look like he's got lipstick on. Next up, we are going to add some Citadel Ratskin Flesh to his hair. So you're going to leave that Fugan Orange shade in the recesses and just pick out all the ridges and details with the Ratskin Flesh. We're now going to add some Fire Dragon Bright to the Ratskin Flesh, and we're just going to give that a little highlight. So as with the armour and everything else, think about where the light's going to catch it, and make sure you get these little bits of hair highlighted where the light will be catching. Now we're going to be working on the little bits of leather on the miniature. We're going to start with a little bit of Citadel Balor Brown. All we're going to be doing here is painting little streaks and chafes onto the leather belt here. at a 90 degree angle to the belt itself, the edge of the belt. So if there's a vertical piece, you want to be doing horizontal blush strokes. And if there's a horizontal piece, you want to be doing vertical brush strokes. You also want to do this on the belt around his waist too. Next we're going to mix a little bit of Citadel Rackarth Flesh with the previous paint, the Ballow Brown. And we're just going to do some smaller scuffs on the leather strap here. Now normally I'd do two layers of highlights with this because there's only a very small amount and it's a bit out the way. We're only doing one highlight on this. I'm going to start working on the fur. We're going to use Citadel Thondia Brown. We're just going to paint some little bits of this onto each of the pieces of fur. Now to highlight, we're going to mix a little bit of Rakarth Flesh to the Thondia Brown, and we're going to start highlighting from about a quarter of the way down, all the way down to the bottom. I'm going to mix some more Rakar Flesh with the previous mix and highlight that a little bit more. This time from probably about halfway down. And I want to have like a kind of beige streak, like a lighter part of fur going from the top left of it down to the bottom right. So I'm going to start adding more of this highlight colour across those areas. I'm going to add some more Rakarth Flesh to the previous mix and just highlight that a little more on all these areas just to get that a lot lighter shade towards the bottom of the fur. So to lighten it up you want to do more of the highlight colours on each section of fur at the bottom than the top so that you'll have that gradual fade into the lighter colour.
Now we're just going to use pure Rakarth flesh, and this is just to do, again, another layer of highlights, just to lighten up those sections a little bit more, lower down. And finally on the fur, we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo White and mix that with the Rakar Flesh, just for one final little highlight on some of the bottom parts of the fur. And that'll just give you that nice lighter shade down at the bottom of it there. Now I'm going to use a tiny little bit of Rakarth flesh, and this is just to paint some colour back onto the scrolls. Also back onto the bone and the little runestone hanging from his sword there. I'm going to mix a little bit of Vallejo White with the Rakar Flesh and we're just going to highlight those scrolls behind his leg there. I'm going to start working on the gemstones, so we're going to use some Citadel and the Fist on Red. And the areas of the gemstones, we're going to paint the bottom left hand, sort of quarter, with a crescent, so that you've got like this crescent going up from the top left to the bottom right of each of the gemstones. I'm also doing the little padded bit behind his head, the red two. For each of the gemstones, do that bottom left quarter. And we can come back and start highlighting that. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet. I'm going to do about 50% of the area that we did with my fist on red to Highlight the cushioning behind his head there, and also on the gemstones. You want to be doing about 50% of the Mephist on red on each of those as well, so sort of like a crescent on the bottom left of each of those gemstones. Now some Wild Rider red, and we are going to do the highlights on the gemstones once again, so you want an even thinner crescent on the bottom left now. I'm just going to do some very thin edge highlights on the cushioning behind his head there too, just to make those stand out. Now we're just going to use some Vallejo White, and we're going to do two little spots of light on the top right of each of those gemstones, and a really, really small and thin line on the bottom left too. Once you've got those on each part of it, that'll be fine. Now we're going to use some Vallejo Black, or whichever black you use, just to go over all those seals and the casing on the Volkite Charger. Just make sure there's no other colours on there, so you just have that nice flat black colour. I'm going to highlight the black using Vallejo German Grey, which is a nice dark grey. Ideal for highlighting black because it's light enough that you can see it, but dark enough that it doesn't stand out too well. To so just give all the areas that will be catching some light a highlight with the German Grey. Then we can move on to the next colour.
For the final part of the black, we're now going to use some Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey. We are going to highlight all the casing on the Volkite Charger with that, just catching all those edges that we get in the light so that the details stand out there. But we're going to leave the seals between the battle plate with just the German Grey highlights, just because I want them to be nice and matte and dull so they don't stand out too much. Final part of the miniature to work on is his sword, and we're going to start reapplying some Araman Blue to the sword. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use Araman Blue in just little patches up and down the sword, so maybe three each side, or two on one side, three on the other, depends how it pans out. But however many it is, I want to have the kind of top and bottom edges of it angled, so it's almost like 45 degrees to the edge of the blade. And just get some nice areas of Araman blue in there, so you've got the shaded bits and flat Araman blue. With those in place, we're going to add some Vallejo white to the Araman blue. And we're just going to do a first highlight on these parts. So you want to leave some of the Araman blue visible at each end of the Araman blue sections, with the exception of the tip of the sword, which you want to get going all the way up to white at the very, very end. So the little bits in the middle of the blade, you want to have the previous shade showing at the end of the bit that you're currently painting each time. Now we're going to add a little bit more of a layer of white to the previous mix. I'm going to do another layer of highlights on these reflected parts. All we're going to be doing is adding this to the previous layer leaving the previous layer on display at the edge of it. As I say, except for the top of the blade where you want that to be going all the way up to the very tip so that you have a dark section of the tip and a light section on the opposite side. Once again, we're going to add some Vallejo white to the previous mix and we're going to highlight in exactly the same way, leaving some of the previous layer visible at either end of the highlight, with the exception of the tip of the blade. Same again, a bit more of a layer of white mixed with the previous mix, and we're going to do another highlight like before, leaving some of the previous layers showing at either end, except for the tip of the blade. By now you should be able to see a nice blend coming from the dark to the light, and see the effect we're going for in the blade itself. Once more, a bit more white, mixing with the previous mix. I'm doing a lot of layers on this just because I want it to blend quite nicely. It's going to be, obviously, the Praetor of the company or what have you that's going to be on the battlefield. So I want it to look extra nice, so I'm doing a few extra layers than I maybe usually would. Just to get that colouring nice and smooth. And so you have the maximum amount of colours in there to kind of make it look nice and bright on those reflected light sections. We are mixing Vallejo White with the previous mix for the final time here. I'm just going to do one very small layer really. And then we'll be coming back just to do one final highlight with white. And that'll be us done.
you can breathe a sigh of relief this is the last layer and we are just going to use some pure Vallejo white just to add a little highlight to each of these sections and then all we're going to do is get some paint on the brush rub the majority of it off and then we're going to use the side of the brush just to go up and down the edges to get that nice smooth white line just to make the sections of the sword really stand out and the edges you do that by using the side of the brush with just a little bit of paint on and that'll give you that nice crisp smooth line going from top to bottom that is the finished space wolf praetor really happy with how it turned out if you'd like to see any of the details covered in more detail such as the green stuff fur or anything like that just sing out in the comments and we'll see what i can do thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content also think about subscribing to some of our other social media link below thanks very much if you like the channel and you enjoy the content and you'd like to support me my coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Thanks very much.